What's up guys, Nightingale here, welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about team comps and team building. I wanna start this video off with a uh, little bit of information here for the newer player, because this is um, something that a lot of people don't quite understand about Nikkei when they first approach the game. So give me just a second to cover this before we actually talk about the team comp system. So. If you've played some gacha games before, you're used to the mentality of we gotta come in, we need to summon for that uh, super carry of some sort, that one big, you know, very meta start unit, and then we progress from there. While that works in a lot of gacha games, that's not necessarily exactly how this works here. While there are hyper carries or super carries in the game, it's only gonna get you so far in your progress. Why I say this is because there are some players who feel that only having the super powerful characters are going to be necessary to beat the game. And in this case, it's not necessarily true. So, while you may come in and you might actually summon for Scarlet, who is one of those units that people summon for when you're starting to the reroll process, if that's something you're even going to do, she's only going to carry you so far because you have to understand how Nikkei works in order for this hyper carry to matter. Also, there will eventually be gear and all these other deficits that are gonna come into it that's gonna slow your progress down to allow this to not just hyper carry you to the very end of the game. It is an idle game. Do remember this first and foremost, that this game is meant to be played over a long period of time and you're not gonna be able to just rush to the end of the game. It's not that type of game. There will be roadblocks, Big one for everybody is the, le the, le the 160 wall. It takes three limit breaks to move forward. And that's gonna take some time. So let's try to get the most out of your account now that you understand that one concept. So this comes down to now team concepts because what I would like you to understand is teams are more important than that one unit. And we're gonna hopefully um, be able to showcase that here in today's video. So first off, what we want to do is introduce you to the idea of how Nikkei teams work. If you were one of those people who just happened to bum rush through the beginning of the tutorial, you might have missed over and glossed over a few of these very important facts that are important. And that is these numbers you see across all these units. Now some of you probably have already put that together and understand the basic concept of it, but some parts of this aren't actually making sense. So I'm gonna clear this up real quick for you and then we're gonna move on because this is one of the most vital systems you need to understand about Nikkei are these numbers. So it's very simple. This means burst order. While the tutorial goes through and it clears this up for you and it does tell you what they do, all it is is a burst one will always burst first, a burst two will go second, and a burst three will always be the third burst. Now how we go about it is about how we use our minds and build the teams up. So a few things we want to point out real quick are the different types of, uh, there's a couple of mechanics you need to understand. So if we come in here to a burst one, just we're going to pick on litter. Now, if you do happen to have this unit on your account, congratulations, you do have one of the best burst ones in the game. And this is one of those units in the beginning people were kind of going for because she is so valuable to your account, being one of the most prominent and dominant burst ones. So here's why. Not only is her overall kit just fantastic between uh, the cooldown of the burst skill, the uh, ammo capacity, recover, um, of the cover that you will hide behind, uh, it recovers that HP, and also just a absolute massive attack buff. There's one other stat here that you want to pay attention to. If you look right over here, and it's probably hard for you to see, so it's better for you just to pull it up in your game. Pull up mo any of your units and look down here at the very bottom of their burst skill and look for the stopwatch. That stopwatch is going to have a numerical value next to it. In this case, for litter, it is, point, it is, it is 20.0 seconds. Meaning, every 20 seconds you can burst this. But now there's a little other math to go into, and that is also the burst cooldown. So this will also apply as you go down. So the first cooldown, once you burst, it's gonna lower the cooldown by 2.4 seconds at her current state for me. Um, now this varies because of how you level up skills. But the one thing that will not change is the base default version of that cooldown. Why this is important is because you need to know that there are other units in the game that have different cooldowns in that burst one. Now I'm gonna pick on Emma here because she is a great example of this. 
a very interesting burst one and a support healing burst that is pretty good to have. I like Emma. I know that she's not the best unit in the world, but I like using Emma as like an off healer at times where if I'm struggling in some content and I really need a heal coming right off, I sometimes will bring her in because of her burst three. Well, to balance the game out, to make it fair, because if this thing was able to run off every 20 seconds, this would be a little probably broken. Because it is quite a heal to have. So, what I want you to take notice here is the stopwatch here it says 40 seconds. Even with the cooldown reductions on her, you're not gonna be able to burst this unit every time you have your burst available. So this is something you need to pay attention to when building out your teams. Not all units you'll be able to simultaneously burst. Why this is also important is for our next fact right here is that your burst threes are typically your big damage. So if we come over here to 2B, what I want you to notice, and this is for any burst three, she also has a 40 second cooldown. And it's impossible for you to be able to chain burst three to burst three on one unit on auto. Now, yes, you can stall out the fight long enough for that cooldown to go and you can burst back into it. But that's not really how you're gonna wanna play this because you theoretically may want to alternate units because of their different uh, functions of what their burst skills do. But just know it's impossible to get two threes off in a row. While we're talking about impossibilities, I'm gonna tell you about another mechanic just so that you know about it and you can say that it, it is here. There is the ability though to get two burst ones. Now, Rupee here is a, this Rupee is a Christmas limited unit. She has a function that is about to come to another new unit uh, that'll be releasing Wednesday, or next Thursday, which is Tia. Tia is, will be a new unit on the 12th, I believe, of October. She will have this burst skill as well. Uh, Re-enter burst skill stage one. So with this unit equipped, you will be able to burst one, then hit another burst one, and then go to three. So in, in, in theory, you can actually get four burst skills off in one turn. Now, just throwing that, that that mechanic exists doesn't mean that's what you need to do all the time. But just know that it is technically possible, and that's one thing we need to understand, you know, in the big picture of building teams, especially with Tia and Naga coming. Well, Naga's here, Tia's on her way. Um, you wanna understand that there are possibilities and these units may be highly valuable later on to you. So, we understand that there are different levels of bursts. So we have a stage one, a stage two, and a stage three burst. We understand that there are cooldowns that we have to manipulate. We understand that we can, um, we can reduce those cooldowns well, now let's talk about building teams because teams are ultimately more important in the grand scheme of your thing, getting those done right, than you pulling for that one random unit that looks cool because that's not gonna always beat the game. I'm gonna make a quick example of this really quick. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this frame here. We're gonna take these units off and we're gonna go ahead and remove those. And I've done something here for you guys to make this a little bit easier because I realized that looking at this on a video, you're probably watching this either on your mobile device and you're gonna go, huh? So I'm gonna help you out. So for those of you that are blind like me, here we go. Boom. All right. So that's just the copy of this. So. In theory, if we wanted to come out and play Opie Supremacy, let's just let's go ahead and do this. Got. Let's throw out some of the biggest plot we can possibly get here on um, Nikkei. So can we're gonna have a burst one, a burst two. Let's grab some big, absolute thick plot here so that it is just absolutely Are mega cannons here. Cause you know, vacation? obviously the bigger the plot, uh, the uh, bigger the um, damage, right? That's totally what's happening, right? Right? Come on, come on, thumbs up the video. You, you know you uh, you know I'm right here. Um, and uh, let's just Do go ahead, there we go. All right, so we've got these units right here. I've got a burst one, I've got a burst two, we got two burst threes, and we got another burst one because I was just, I was trying to make this fast and not just sit here on, ah, hold on. I got bigger, bigger mega melons, there we go. All right, so there we go. Team Absolute gar Gargantuan Opi. So, we're playing the game, right? We're, we're gonna win. We're gonna be able to clear content. Sure. But, take a look at this and just ignore the fact that these things are unleveled. Let's just say these are normal synced units that are in your synchro device. This sounds like a great idea, right? Well, till you realize what all is here. So we talk about team comps and some of the importance. 
One small factor we haven't mentioned yet are the weapon types. This is something that you may actually have to consider because there are stages where everything is long range. Some stuff is medium range, some stuff is short range. Have you understood what that does yet? Do you know that there is a fall off here that reduces the damage based off of the distance of the target? So if we actually went a little bit deeper here, you would realize that this team comp is even worse than it may seem. We have machine gun, great. We have a shotgun, a shotgun, a shotgun, and a machine gun. So in theory, we've got two mid-range weapons and three short-range weapons. So we have no coverage in the back. Now, while technically Summer Anise and Noir could reach back there, it's not really what we want. But there's also another problem here. And you don't realize it yet. So, not that it's a big issue, but take a note. We have a 40 second burst on Emma. So she'll be our first burst one. Okay, cool. Now we move over to Guilty. We have a 20 second burst. All right, so it'll go Emma Guilty. Cool. Now if I'm correct, yep. All right, Summer Anise, 40 second burst. So Emma Guilty Anise. All right, that's our first burst order. Now we need to go over to now she's got a 20 second burst. So theory, in theory, we could actually be bursting with her first if we wanted to. But I want to burst with Emma. I feel like, let's say her heals are just better. We're not gonna say that it's for the fact, but just for the state of maybe let's say investment or whatever, her heals are better and more what I'm after. But, so we have a 20 second burst here. So it'll burst Emma, Soda, Emma. That's how that will run. Now is this ideal? No. Because to me, we're, we're missing stuff early on, and there's a better way to do this. While we're using all the units that, you know, we feel are best, this isn't necessarily, this is gonna be one of those things that are gonna hinder you from progressing in the game. But we do have two absolutely meta units here. We've got Summer and East, and we've got Noir. Well, we're missing pieces of that puzzle to make this better. So let's first dive down to your beginning team and explain a couple of mechanics and then we're going to teach you about the actual thing. So even if you just summoned for Summer Anise, it's not going to do you much good because of how her kit's going to work. In the end, you don't you don't understand all the minor details that make Summer Anise amazing. While she is a great unit, there's more to it. Just like Noir, an absolute great unit, but without knowing all the other innards, you don't know why Noir is great, but you've been told these are great. So you put them on your team, you're expecting them to work. So let's roll back for a minute and now go to a new player's perspective of this. As a brand new player, you are probably going to have to what most people start with to get going brand new day one in the game, is you're gonna look at something like this. We'll this. Now, just know that my go. Rappy will look a little different than yours because I have a summer outfit on her. But if you've been playing since then or during the summer event, maybe you did get her. If not, it's this is just the normal SR Rappy you get. So this is what you are introduced with to the game. You get one, two, three, and I also believe you're given uh, a little bit right here. Uh, where is she? Uh, nope, that would be it. So that's Neon Rappy and Anise. All right, so this will be your basic starting three. Now, let's assume, we're just gonna go ahead and throw this in here because we assumed you rerolled, you've got one SSR of some sort. But just so that it stands out here, we've got Scarlet. So, this is where you want to get started. So, we're building up our team comps, we're building up, we're getting started. So what's being said here is, we've got Neon as a burst one, we've got Anise as a burst two, we put Scarlet here. And now the reason why you saw me move Scarlet is for some other little minor fact that's important for you to know. And we wanna cover this before we finish everything off. Where these units sit in terms of like this, just me moving them around in here, does not determine anything about how they function. The game will always read one, two, three, no matter where they sit in the game. So just because Anise is first does not mean we're not gonna be able to burst. So it, yes, it reads two, three, one, three, but the game will always read it as one, two, three because it reads from left to right. Now I know for some of you that's really weird and for some of you, you read right to left and some of you read up to down. So I, I get it. 
you know, people, you're gonna go, all right. But this is the way it works is it looks at it from right to left, or from left to right in the terms of mechanics. But there is a mechanic you need to understand very quickly here. Where the order of your threes are does matter. If whoever is on the furthest left will burst first. So in this case, because Scarlet is our carry, we wanna burst her first. Or for, let's say, whatever reason, you notice that you're stalling out before the boss stage and you're losing damage in the boss stage, why not try the other way? Why not let Rappy burst first? And then you burst with your bigger damage when it comes down time to the boss. This could be the difference in you beating a stage. So think about this as a strategic thing. Now, here's the other fact. You don't even have to do this. You can literally manually burst it if you're playing on the phone or on the um, PC. You can do both. You can manually or auto play these. So at that point, it does not matter what order if you're manualing it. But if you're gonna be playing auto, it does matter where they sit in terms of who, which number is first. So what I wanna talk about now is moving forward a little bit into what are some basic team top comps that you need to understand when starting the game because this is going to be vital for you clearing content easier so as a brand new player if you did not roll for litter what do you do because you've already been told or at least by me that litter is now the best burst one in the game okay well there's actually a few others there is another great burst one that a lot of people want little bit different type of unit if you but want, that's dorothy i will join you your but this is a pilgrim so not only are we trying to roll for scarlet we're also trying to roll for a banner unit or what have you if you're starting in a collab or you're starting at a, a limited like uh, a seasonal character or just anniversary because this is kind of what we're making this for is in preparation for anniversary but also just future proofing you might be going chasing that unit and then whatever you get on your account so going after Dorothy is a little harder to do because the drop rate for this is way lower. But I'm who is a lot easier to get? Litter. Litter's a lot easier to get due to how the banner system works and also the normal recruitment tickets. You can eventually focus this unit down and attempt to get her. But what happens if you don't have her to start with? What do you do? Well, you've got a couple different options. You do have some alternate burst ones that are great. You know, you have volume who's great. You have noise who's great. Depending on what you're doing, yeah, Miranda could go. be good to get started. The old, one of the control. old uh, metas were talking about um, Ludmilla. Back during when I started playing, they were saying Ludmilla would probably be one of the best starters, but it didn't really play out because they bugged her skill. But there's something even easier for her to get. There's this little girl right here named N102. N102's kit is very good for brand new players who don't roll for litter because she is litter light. Now, what this means is overall in her skills, she does do good value for a 20 second burst one because you want to try to get your bursts off as fast as possible. But she does give you some advantages that are good. It gives you ammo capacity, which is great. It gives you critical uh, damage. The charge damage is a little meh, depending on if you have a charged unit or not. Um, but ignore that. We're not really here for that. But what we are here for is her burst three or her burst one here, which is increases attack by 11.3 one at base level now at best you if you really 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 needed it we have a theory here that's called 444 which takes your skills up to level four it's a investment but it's not a steep investment it's not super super expensive in the grand scheme of things going much higher than that is expensive for you so at the worst case scenario you would technically do this but what we try to tell new players to do is keep from doing that all right Try to hold this out as long as possible without putting the investment into it. But what you can do, which is completely acceptable, is you know putting this unit in your synchro device, putting gear on the unit, all that stuff is great. Getting stats is good. Leveling the unit up is good. Trying to keep up into the skills, yes, they eventually do give out resets at points, but let's try to avoid doing those in case you do have a bigger screw up later down the road or some reason you want to uh, reset something more important. So try not to blow it on this because we do know that this will get replaced. So we have N102. Now we need a number two. Well, we have a lot of different options depending on where we go. So if we are starting, My turn. Anise will probably be your <laughs> burst two of choice to get going. But let's say you have some SSRs. What are some of the SSRs that are easy accessible that are good? 
To give you an idea, that could be anything Leave from Rupee, is a very easy, accessible unit to get a hold of. Um, you have Where's Senti, another sense? easy and accessible unit to get a hold of. You have Dala, an easy, clear. acceptable one. Um, oh boy, oh boy. Diesel isn't it's horrible to get started with. Um, but then the rest, and I think Admi uh, is also a good like starter unit. I know some people like Signal, just depends on what type of stuff you're doing. So we have several options here. We also have another option. Teacher. Naga's currently what on banner. Should you be rolling for her? Probably not. But just to show you, we'll talk about this one later, but just know that she is there. So let's try to upgrade this. Let's go saying you have played a little bit. Leave so we'll put Rupia. So we've got N102 and Rupia. Burst one, we got 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Now it's time to put down the damage. This comes down to how you started the game. Did you start re-rolling for a burst three, like Scarlet, Haran, uh, Modernia? Was it something, did you guys come from the near uh, collab or a summer event? So if you came from near, you probably have a 2B or a 2. If you re-rolled pretty hard and degenerately, Who you probably went after Scarlet or Modernia. So you might have one of these. It might be Haran might be yours. I don't really know who your it, who's yours is. But just Who because she's be a very iconic look, let's throw... Scarlet in here so that we do have a difference. All right, so all we need now is another burst three. So this comes down to what do you get on your account? By playing the game, you are guaranteed pravity. Need me? So after so many days of playing and beating content, you'll eventually unlock pravity. So I'm just gonna put her here because this is, you're just trying to get into the game. This doesn't mean this is best team comp, but this will be doing more damage and it will also help you out because it is an SSR. So there will be multiplier differences to get going. Now all we need is a filler unit. This filler unit can really be anything. So think about what you're doing. If you have a lot of short range stuff, look for stuff that revolves around your SMG and shotguns. If you've got a lot of mid range stuff, look at things like uh, assault rifles. If you've got uh, long range, look at maybe sniper rifles. Um, if you just want consistent downrange damage, look at machine guns. There's a bunch of different things you can look at. In this case, we're just gonna throw in a random unit just because um, it doesn't really matter for us. And we're gonna say that uh, we Let's have Pepper. Together. Pepper was what we oh, ended up. That was one of our random starter units. So there we go. Now, here's the cool thing. If we actually need it, and depending on what we're doing, we could burst Pepper for whatever reason. Um, but it doesn't have to be. But everything is set up the way we want it. It will literally burst in the proper order and we're good to go. This is a good working team comp. You've got a 20 second burst to a 20 second burst to a 40 second burst. And then you have another variation of a 20 second burst and you have another 40 second burst on Pravity. So everything here is working together. We now have a functioning working beginner team. Well, now let's raise the bar. Now let me show you a few teams that you wanna know about to start working towards because like I said, this is more important to know what to build for than to pull just those random waifu units and then expect to beat content. Let's actually teach you how to beat content now. So, to sum this video up here at the end, we're gonna show you a, quickly, we're gonna show you a couple different team comps that are very viable for the general player base. And this one shatters, the first one we're gonna do shatters every mentality you've ever been taught. Summon for limited, summon in for um, collabs, all that stuff throws that completely, literally, throws that out the window. Not a single one of these units is limited, a collab, they are a couple pilgrims. So let's break this down for you. So if we wanna go into the absolute most met, one of the most meta teams you can get your hands on. I may not be Litter will be number one. One of your best burst ones stuck. you can possibly get in the game. Then, unfortunately, if you is just get Blanc, she is in. garbage. The reason being is because there's something you need to see here. This is one thing that people don't realize. That is a 60 second cooldown, people, on a burst two. She is garbage by herself. But what I want you to realize is activates when full burst ends with an ally from the same squad still on the battlefield. She is part of squad 777, which means her twin sister Noir is the only unit currently in the game as of the 6th of October who can activate that passive. So, meaning you will have to have 
her Can twin sister on the team. Fun. And I'm gonna put her right there. So, this comes down to a couple different things. You could technically pop her on here if you have her in this next burst slot. You could technically put Modernia here if this was your best burst slot. But I'm gonna show you the best variation of this. And that is Who Scarlet will be your burst, your first blade. burst three. And then it'll burst into Noir. And then your final unit, which will not Can burst, is Modernia. Mission, Modernia is an absolute laser for damage. She can nearly out damage herself bursting if you just let her use her first skill only. That's how dangerous she is. It's awesome. But this team will carry you through most of the content in the game. The issue is, is you've now got to pull two pilgrims out of these banners. One of them, you can probably get a hold of fairly easily. And I'm gonna say this in quotations, easily because you are thinking about rerolling. Doesn't mean you have to, but by that by that mentality, you've technically got one of the two. Now the thing comes down to is you've got a wish list litter, you have to wish list Blanc, and you have to wish list Noir. Modernia and Scarlet cannot be wish listed, so you're up to the mercy of RNG to give them to you. But this would be one of the most deadly teams you can get in the game. Now, let's throw this out real quick so that you do understand this. If you are a person who started it near. While this is technically viable, this isn't what belongs for her. Just because you have to be doesn't mean this team is best for her. And why I wanna bring this up is because there is something better for her. Because you need to understand one basic thing about her kit is that she's an HP based unit. So there is a better team for her. And I'll teach you about this one because if you were, let's say this, you were Leave a person who summoned for A2, me. this one will work just fine for you. But if you are a person who has 2B and this is where you're starting, just know that I this isn't your squad optimal for her. It will work. You will beat content. You will go quite far with this. But when it comes down to the, what we're gonna say, the difference, who this would be beat that hands down blade. most every time. Unless there was some reason that damage be was your, your viability and you just needed to survive longer. In that case, 2B would be the queen of that because she's so much thicker in many different ways than Scarlet. So let's teach you now about a second variation because in reality, you need to know about three teams in the game. I just showed you one. I'm about to show you one of the next major playing teams in the game. So number two, for most people who start with 2B, what you're gonna wanna do is start it's with Noise. Noise is gonna bo boost the HP of, um, is gonna boost the HP of 2B, so that's great. Now, here's the downfall for me. I don't have the best in slot number two here. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, I don't. I didn't pull for her. Uh, I didn't realize that we were about to get a HP-based giga carry in the game. So I skipped out on mass to save for um, See You Again, which was Summer and East and uh, Hell. So in my case, I'm gonna be using two units here to show you a theory. One is a unit everybody can get, you Quincy. Sure everybody can that? get a hold of this. Quincy I is a liberation unit, and this would technically be a great start. Now, what you need is the next best unit for her is another burst one, which is Let's volume. Volume will go there, started. volume will give you the extra buffs, and she is a 20 second cooldown versus a 40 second cooldown of, um, of Helm, or of, not Helm, but uh, Noise. So Noise will go through and burst first, then you'll burst, um, you will burst uh, volume. Now we've got one unit left Let's that we need to add in here, which started. is a carry of sort. Um, also, I should go ahead and mention real quick about the twos is the other one. If you're playing Wait, manually, like Novel sales? would be the best version for 2B, but we're gonna say everybody's you here to play auto. So that? for me, it'd be Quincy. Now in terms off, you know. for me, it depends on where you are and what you have in the game. If I'm trying to come up with three unique teams and Modernia is already taken, but I'm gonna throw in Helm right here because she's leveled and I might want to heal life. her up. Or if I'm after damage, you I might've uh, put Guillotine in and work with Guillotine for a second, just super damage. But let's say for right now, because of where I'm at Finally. with what I have leveled, it's I'd be using the Helm variation. So here we go. That's two of three teams we need in the game. What's the third one? Well, I just said Tia and Naga have come out in uh, or on their way out uh, for the full release. And there's a third variation that you're gonna wanna probably look at. One team comp that you might if see you want, is I something that starts with this, this unit. 
But let's assume we've pulled Tia. She comes out next week. She's a burst one. If she has know, that re-enter burst skill. You, your grace. So now we burst Tia into Dorothy. Into Naga. Teacher, what are we learning today? And now we have an options of burst threes. Many different options here. This really comes down to what's left in your game and what can you use. One option I'm considering. Are you putting need me? Team last shot. These two will definitely do quite a lot. Another one that I'm very interested to see is because with Tia and Naga, they also recover Need HP. I want to see how A2 is going to work in this. So all I need is one other unit, and specifically one that doesn't really require um, a ton of healing. So if I might want to run Guillotine in that other team, I could run Helm here and be bursting her for extra heals, trying to keep A2 up. There's a lot of different options, and I'm not saying all these have to be done exactly this way. But just know when it comes down to the in-game co in -game content, which is Union Raids, you have to have three teams. So this is one that has my interest as well, is working something like this. The possibilities technically are endless. And in theory, you're gonna want five teams in the end. Because there is another piece of content that you should know about, and that's Solo Raid, another in-game piece of content. But there's a catch to Solo Raid that's a little bit better than Union Raid. Union Raid, once you use a team, it's done for the day. For 24 hours, you cannot use that team again inside Union Raid. So you need three completely unique teams in order to do damage. In Solo Raid, you just need to be able to beat said content. You get three attempts a day per bot, per three attempts. So you get three full clears and each clear is allowed five attempts. So for some players, you can literally one shot each one of those stages. For other players, you will need to have multiple attempts, but as long as you clear that boss to going to the next one, you still get access to all your units. But if you cannot clear it, you do not get access to your five, your two, be able to use the same team multiple times so those three clears that you could use your absolute meta team you as long as you are, are beating the content you can Sounds have fine. access to oh, your meta your on this mission, commander? so that just comes down to you being able to Is have the fun? time investment in them me, in order to level this best, up but I can at least crack so you beat content you get access to that three times but as once you no longer can beat it you lose access to these units which is nice it will help out. But this is one thing you need to think about in the long term of the game, because we're gonna show you this here on the banner and then we're gonna wrap up. If we go to banners, because this is something you need to know, we've talked about this already in depth in other videos, I think it's called uh, Collab, Limiteds, and Pilgrims. You need to understand this. Getting the units is a little bit harder than you think, but it's also a lot easier than you think. When you come into the game, you are presented with a couple different types of banners. Banner type number one is the rate up banner of whatever's going on. This could be limited, not limited. Uh, this could be event, collab, what have you. As long as it spends the advanced ticket here, these uh, advanced recruitment vouchers, this is the current unit. There is no difference in limited currency versus collab currency versus uh, random general pool unit currency. It's all gonna be the same when it comes to the brand new unit. We all use these and we all use crystals or gems. But when you're pulling on one of these banners, you're pulling against every unit that is available in the game that is not limited or collab. So that's everything here. And this will be any unit, collab, limited, whatnot. Another banner you're gonna have is the Ordinary Recruitment, which uses recruitment vouchers. These are where everything goes that is not limited or collab once they go off a banner. This system allows you to focus down specific units that allow you to make building team comps a lot easier, as well as collecting units you miss. So just understand that with this wish list, you are able to focus down these teams and really try to be able to dial this in and it's only the units you have on this list. So if a unit shows up you didn't want, that's not a pilgrim, because that's all that's extra added into this, that's on you for selecting it. It's not that random unit you had no desire to have. Any SSR that shows up is either a pilgrim or one of your 15 units you want. That's a big deal. So, sometimes it might be worth you 
completely skipping out on whatever said random new unit is for you to focus in over here to generally pull up your units. But be smart where you do this because when there are events like anniversary coming up, that unit could be good. But again, will that one unit carry you if you've already got enough there? That's something that's to be seen because it depends on where you are in your account. But don't think one unit will make or break your account if it's not a missing piece to that overall thought process of a team. Because five burst threes are gonna do you no good on your account. You will never get to see a single one of their burst threes without a one and a two on that team. And just like all burst ones and twos, you'll never get a third burst off if you don't have a three there. But thankfully most of the threes are great damage. So hopefully this is gonna help you out. Now. I know that this is a lot of information to try to absorb in, and I've tried to make it as clean and precise as I possibly can to deliver this to you. Answering comments, I have no problem with on this, especially when it revolves around trying to help with some of this, but here's the thing. It depends so much on what is sitting in your box here. And things you may not think about that are valuable might be valuable. It comes down to understanding their kits. Don't be afraid to come in here and read what these skills say. Understand that they are sometimes are hidden aspects in these kits that make these units better than what they have seen. Because sometimes they might have a little flavor text here that says affects the targets, affects same targets when they are belong to electric code. So if you have other electric code stuff or dealing with that, maybe this flavor text is what makes them better than what you think. There's all sorts of things you have to realize. Also, you need to make sure you watch out for the big catches. Like the 60 second burst thing here. If you don't have Noir, this unit sucks. But Noir on her own is not bad. She's actually a pretty decent burst three without her sister, but give her her sister and now her bonuses are great. So look at it like this. You've got many different things you need to focus in on and getting general team comps is way more valuable to you and your progression than pulling the one hot unit with uh, a great body. Anything to say? Like, in the end, we're all here to pull for hot chicks, but let's be real. You wanna play the game too, because the story is absolutely amazing. You, I wanna see you guys progress through that. It is absolutely a phenomenal story, and you should be able to experience that too. But you got a few hurdles to get over. 160 is gonna be one of them, and I don't want your team comps to be holding you back. That's why that recruitment list is so valuable to understand so early on, because that can help you get those three stars a lot faster. Instead of playing gotta catch them all and constantly changing those out to stay up to date with the newest units, focus it down pretty hard. Try not to change it unless there is a unit that just drastically influences your team. Like right now, Missilis is about to gain two probably perma units once we see the final details of uh, Tia and Naga together. Naga's out, but now we're waiting for Tia to show up. But most likely, those two units are gonna be there to stay for quite a long time. So that means there's two slots left in Missilis that are not perma units. Litter will be one, Tia will be another, and Naga will be, probably be the other. You move down to Tetra, and that's gonna be Noir and Blanc are gonna hard hang out there. If you happen to have, um, if you happen to have uh, 2B, well, you're probably going to be hard summoning for um, volume and noise as well for now. But who knows? Anniversary might change it up. That Pilgrim unit, if it is a Pilgrim, will be could be the game-changing unit for whatever team you're doing. You just have to think about that. It's a lot to think about when building team comps here. So I hope I've been able to sum this up for you. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below. Come ask me out on stream. If you see me that I'm live, I'll be happy to answer it. It doesn't matter if I'm not playing Nikkei or not. I'm always here to answer and help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching this long video. I know it's a lot of information and uh, hope you enjoy the game. That's really what this is for. I hope you enjoy the game. So you guys take care. We'll see you in the next one.